fundamentals of derivatives call and put option wishing you all a very happy and prosperous new year 2020-22 today's resource person respected ca sandeep agrawal ji respected senior members past chairman of eirc and chapter presently uh, devashish sir ak ss santhaliya sir and ak swain sir have already joined uh, respected ccm rcm esteemed members and all learned participants chairman of the chapter cma himaj kumar mishra secretary of the chapter cma sn tripathi and all other professional colleagues in the managing committee of our chapter icma shaktidhar singh chairman pd committee warmly welcomes you all to the today's webinar before introducing our today's research person i would like to request our official of the chapter to play institute anthem as a mark of inauguration in virtual mode misvetu now i would like to highlight few lines about uh, today's research person c s sandeep agrawal c s sandeep agrawal is a chartered accountant with 11 years of post qualification experience across multiple branches finance out of this 11 years of experience 6 years has been spent in a treasury and banking role currently he is working in indorama india private limited as agm finance kolkata heading treasury function he has previously worked in icic bank limited lapraj india limited uh, keshorama industries limited thank you sir for accepting our invitation thank you uh, shaktidhar ji uh, singh ji uh, for inviting me for this session thank you sir thank you <clears throat> can i start yes yes one minute one minute uh dear professional friends most of us anyway involved in investing of our surplus money for our future and accumulate wealth some of us might have also invested in capital market and some of us might have doing portfolio management investing is the act of allocating resources usually money with the expectation of generating an income or profit in investing risk and return are two sides of same coin low risk generally means low expected returns while higher returns are usually recommended by higher risk there are various options of investment based on our risk appetite such as fd stocks mutual fund real estate gold etc today we are going to discuss about the fundamentals of derivatives call and put option in stock market and how can we generate profits options involves risks and are not suitable for everyone option trading can be speculative uh, in nature and carry a substantial risk of loss so before trading in call and put option and making profit out of it we must have adequate knowledge and skill today we have with us learned speaker ca sandeep agrawal ji who will deliver us fundamentals of these two hope this session shall be a good learning session for all of us 
and very much helpful in trading on call and put option. Let's listen to the today's speaker. But before that, I would like to request our chairman, Shemi Himaj Misra, to address. Stay healthy and stay safe. Jai Jagannath. Thank you, Shakti sir. Very warm good evening to each one joined in today's webinar. Today's resource person, CA Sandeep Agarwalji, respected senior members, uh, London participants, uh, chairman, past chairman of the chapter and IRC, uh, present central council member and regional council member. Chairman PT Committee and past chairman CMA Shakti Dhar Singh sir, my dear secretary CMA Surjanaran Tripathi sir, and all other professional colleges in the management committee of our chapter. On behalf of the management committee and the team of ICAI Bhuneswar chapter, ICMA Himoj Misra, chairman, <coughs> warmly welcome you all to today's virtual program, Fundamental of Derivatives, Call and Put Option. We also convey our hearty thanks and profound gratitude to CA Sandeep Agrawalji for accepting our invitation. For information of CA Sandeep Agrawalji, I am highlighting few words about our Bhuvaneswar chapter. Our chapter is one of the vibrant chapters in India and <coughs> already received consecutively 22nd time best chapter award in Eastern region. This chapter is the only chapter received brand building award during the year 2018 at Pan India. This chapter has more than 700 members. Each year, around 1,200 students enroll in CMA students through this chapter. In each year, on an average, 100 students are being cleared final CMA course and qualified, and more than 300 students clear intermediate CMA course. In comparison to all India percentage of result, our chapter students are always better. This chapter regularly conducts seminar, webinar, etc. for updating the knowledge of our members and other stakeholders. <clears throat> and past chapter at Pan India who conducts online classes for our students and virtual programs considering the pandemic COVID-19. I pray before Almighty for all of you and your beloved one, good health and prosperity, wishing a grand success of today's webinar. Jai Jagannath, Namaskar. Thank you, Shakti sir. Thank you, Seme Himoj Misra, Chairman of ONC Chapter. Now, I would request the CA Sandeep Agrawalji uh, to uh, start the technical session. Yeah, uh, so thank you so much, uh, Himoji and Sakti Dharji, for your uh, kind words and for uh, introducing me. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so this is my uh, first session on this uh, fundamentals of derivatives of call and put option with uh, ICI uh, Bhuvaneshwar chapter. So prior to that, I have done uh, two uh, physical session as well on the Excel uh, with the uh, Institute of Cost Accountants of India, Calcutta chapter, uh, along with uh, Satya Mahasar as well. Yes, yeah. Uh, so let's start. Uh, so uh, during the course of this presentation, I would request if anybody has any query, so kindly note it down, uh, which we will definitely address at the end of the session. Mm -hmm. So uh, before we go directly into the option, so just to mm -hmm. give you a brief idea about the various derivatives which are available in the market. So option is one of the derivatives. So we have like a uh, option contract, we have a forward contract, we have futures contract, we have the swap contract as well. So we just uh, uh, brief about each of these uh, four types of derivatives, then we will move straight away to the option. So option contract is basically a type of financial instrument uh, whose value is derived on the basis of the value of the underlying on which this option has been uh, uh, bought or sold. Uh, so. The person who has bought the option, he is basically having a right who may exercise or who may not exercise at the expiry of that uh, contract. Whereas the seller has got the obligation uh, to honor the contract in case the option buyer comes to uh, exercise that contract. Whereas 
फ्यूचर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज बेसिकली लीगल एग्रीमेंट वेयर बाई एन अंडरलाइंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज परचेज एंड प्राइस इज डिटरमाइंड which will be exercised at a specified price in the future and uh, most of the times the futures contract is a uh, traded on an exchange where the prices are settled on daily basis so like ebc like uh, i'm sure everybody is aware about the nifty index and the bank nifty index so like if uh, somebody has uh, bought or sold a nifty futures contract or a bank nifty futures contract that is done on the exchange and whatever is the value at the end of the day of the nifty future or the bank nifty future so the price at the end of the day and the price at the beginning of the day so whatever is the difference it is either beneficial to you or it is against to you that has to be settled on daily basis at the end of the day so that is basically a futures contract brief uh so there is another type of derivative which is a forward contract Uh, so uh, like uh, say in the currency market so in the treasury department people keeps on buying the forward contract or they keep on selling the forward contract on the currency which is mainly a uh, usd inr depending on the person is an importer or exporter so that is a custom uh, customizable agreement that is generally done uh, with the banks only and that's why it is called as traded over the counter otc otc market the futures contract is done by way of an exchange whereas the forward contract is done over the counter that is called an otc then there is another type of derivative called as swap uh, so uh, just to give you an uh, example of this swap in order to have a practical understanding is that like say if a corporate is having a term loan uh, for a certain tenor say for 2 to 3 years and the uh, rate of that contract is either variable or fixed and the corporate is have so say for an example the corporate is having a loan where the rate of interest is variable it is linked to some kind of benchmark like the mclr or some kind of uh, ebil or mybar and all and the corporate is having a view that the interest rate is going to uh, rise in the future so they generally enter into an irs which is uh, which is called as interest rate swap Uh, they enter into a contract with the bank whereby they would be paying uh, the variable rate of interest to the banks and the banks would be paying to them a fixed rate of interest so that is an example of a swap contract so now we uh, we will speak only about the option which is one of the underlying so we have uh, explained uh, just the basic of uh, futures forward contract and swap which is also uh, some variant of uh, derivative uh, so basically in an option contract there are two parties one is the buyer and another is the seller the buyer of the option is having a limited risk his risk is always limited whereas his reward is unlimited whereas it is vice versa in case of the option seller the option seller's reward will always be limited to the extent of the amount of premium received by him whereas his risk will always be unlimited we will explain this by way of a practical example in the future slides uh the option buyer will make money only in case the underlying instrument by which the option value is getting derived it moves in the direction of the option buyer whereas the option seller will make money in two scenarios one in case the underlying price starts moving in the opposite direction of the option buyer or the price doesn't moves at all or it moves in a very tight range of uh, plus minus 1 to 1% so uh, in india we have option tradings in various indexes like uh, nifty bank nifty financial nifty uh, recently nifty mid cap has already been uh, added where the option trading can be done and then we also have the options uh, in the stocks as well that is uh, various kind of uh, equities which are available for trading on the nsc like say uh, itc or uh, tcs infosys wipro so all those stocks which are present in the futures and options segment that is called fno so you will have the uh, op- uh, call and put option available in that as well as well as we also have options available in the currency segment as well so in the currency segment the options can be done by way of an exchange as well where the option contract are available on the nsc website as well and the most of the corporates they generally do uh, options in currency over the counter with the banks 
whereas at the uh, global level we have option tradings in commodities and bonds as well so in india we have option trading only in equity indexes uh, stocks and currencies whereas at the global level the options are present in these instruments as well as in the bonds and commodities as well and all these instruments are uh, traded in the nse and bse segment only so option definition we have already covered in the uh, first slide uh, so why it is called a derivative because the value of the option is basically derived from the underlying instrument so how the underlying instrument will move up or down depending on that the price of the option will move so basically there are two broad categories of option one is european style options uh, which can be exercised only at expiration what do you mean by that uh, so basically if somebody has bought an option contract and that option contract is basically moving in direction of the option buyer and he wants to exercise so he cannot exercise at that point of time he can exercise only at the expiry of the contract whereas there is another type of option which is called as american uh, uh, style options american style options can be uh, exercised at the expiry or before the expiry as well in india we follow only the european style options so whatever options which we are seeing in the stock market your nse index your nifty or bank nifty or your stock options or currency that can be exercised only on expiry of the contract if before the same somebody wish to uh, exercise they cannot exercise they can simply go and uh, square that contract at the market price and take the profit or loss so we will just uh, understand uh, the call and put option so basically like we have understood like there are basically two types of option one is uh, european uh, style of option and another is american style of option in india we follow only american style of option now there are broadly two sub categories of this option one is call option and another is put option so we will just ex uh, we will just try to understand the call and put option by way of an example like say uh, somebody uh, wants to insure their life so generally people what they do in the current scenario they generally go and buy a term insurance uh, we will see very few people buying a traditional insurance we generally see people buy uh, go and buy a term insurance so like say a person who is of the age of 30 years he has basically bought a term insurance of rupees 50 lakh from xyz insurance company So generally, a fifty lakhs of term insurance for a thirty-year guy will work out to somewhere around seven uh, thousand to fifteen thousand rupees a year. So basically, this seven thousand to ten thousand of seven thousand to fifteen thousand of premium, which the uh, insurance buyer is paying to the insurance company, that is basically the profit for the insurance company. So basically, what he has done, he has basically bought a put option on his life. so if that person dies during the term of that term insurance so that 50 lakhs amount of rupees will be paid by that xyz insurance company to the nominee of that person so means like this is just an uh, hypothetical example uh, to give you an understanding about the put option so that uh, in future whenever you are hearing about a put option you can recollect this example so we can see a person is basically paying 10000 rupees a year and say he has taken the insurance for 30 years so in 30 years he is paying only 3 lakh rupees that to in various installments at the end of every year whereas if something happens to him uh, the amount which his family member would receive is 50 lakh rupees so you can see if we treat the uh, person who has bought this insurance at the as the put option buyer so you can see his risk is limited to the extent of 3 lakh rupees of premium which would be paid over a period of 30 years whereas the reward for his family in case something happens to him during this term of the insurance it is 50 lakh rupees so though we have understood in the previous slide that uh, the risk of the option seller is always unlimited and in my example it is only limited to the extent of 50 lakh rupees so i have just given this example as hypothetical for uh, understanding the concept of the put option that what is the put option is and then if we go at the call option so we take another example uh, for understanding the basic concept of call option so like say uh, a person wants to buy a property in a city 
uh, he identifies a property. He goes to the uh, property seller and asks him the price. The property seller says that uh, the price of this property is rupees uh, 50 lakh rupees. The person enters into a contract with uh, the property seller. Uh, the price of the property has been fixed at 50 lakh rupees. They enter into a sale agreement for buying the property for rupees 50 lakhs. And the person pays a token money of rupees 2 lakhs upfront with the promise that 48 lakh rupees would be paid at the end of uh, three months. If it doesn't turns up and pays that rupees 48 lakhs and take the delivery of the property, that entire rupees 2 lakhs will be forfeited. Now say when the contract is nearing to end, that is when the uh, when we have arrived at the end of the three months, the person comes to know that the real estate prices has crashed. Now that same property is available in the market at a price of say 40 lakh rupees. Now that person has two options, either to pay that 48 lakh rupees and take the delivery of the uh, property, which was agreed at a value of rupees 50 lakhs, or that person can go and forfeit that rupees 2 lakhs, forget that agreement and go and buy an another property. So this is an example of the call option. Basically, he has paid a rupees 2 lakhs as token money at the uh, initiation of the agreement and he has basically got a right. So he is having a right. He may exercise, he may not exercise. That is up to him. But the person who has agreed to sell a property, he is under an obligation. If that person would have come at the end of three months, to buy that property, that person is under an obligation to sell the property to this property buyer at rupees 48 lakhs. So this is just to give you an understanding about the call and put option. So in future, whenever you are hearing a word of call and put option, you can uh, recall this example of this uh, insurance and property buyer. It will give you a better understanding of uh, correlating it with your practical example as well. So these are basically just a broad features of the call and put option, which I explained in the previous uh, slide as well. Uh, you can see uh, the buyer of the option in both the call and put option is having a limited risk and his reward is always unlimited. As we uh, explained in the previous uh, slide, uh, in the case of the uh, property, uh, buyer and seller as well as in the case of the insurance buyer and seller as well, whereas the seller of the option, his reward is always limited. So in the case of the insurance example, the maximum profit of the insurance company from that particular insurance sold was 3 lakh rupees only over a period of 30 years, whereas uh, his uh, risk was unlimited, not exactly unlimited in our example. So it was unlimited to the extent of rupees 50 lakh rupees. If that person would have died, that person, the insurance company would have to pay rupees 50 lakh rupees. Then uh, the person who is the buyer of the call or put option, he is always having a right to exercise. Uh, he can exercise or he may not exercise. That is up to him because basically he has paid the premium. Whereas the seller doesn't have any right to exercise. He is always under an obligation to honor the obligation in case the buyer of the option comes to exercise his right. So this uh, we just have uh, taken an hypothetical example to understand the call and put option from the practical perspective. So I have basically uh, taken the example of the uh, Nifty uh, futures contract. Somebody saying anything? No, please continue. Yeah. See, uh, I have basically taken uh, that uh, Nifty Futures say is trading as uh, 18,000 and Nifty Spot is at 17,950. I have taken Nifty Futures and Nifty Spot is basically the call and put option is always priced according to the futures price. So if you go to the money control app or to any uh, website which uh, displays the price of this indexes, you will always see that there is a spot bank Nifty and uh, Nifty price. And you will always see a three months futures contract also gets traded, which generally trades as a uh, at a premium as compared to the spot price, though there are certain instances as well where the futures also trade at a discount as compared to the spot price. But those cases are very uh, nominal. So I have just taken a futures price and a spot price. Futures, basically the call and put option price is always determined from the futures. Now say somebody uh, uh, has bought a call option of 17,800 strike price. 
and the option price which has been paid by him upfront is rupees three hundred rupees. The intrinsic value is two hundred rupees. Now, why the intrinsic value is two hundred rupees? Because the Nifty futures is trading as eighteen thousand, and the strike price is seventeen thousand eight hundred. So, he is basically already in the money by two hundred rupees. Now, say assume if the contract expires today itself, so this person who has bought a seventeen thousand eight hundred strike price call, he will basically get two hundred rupees. Because Nifty Futures was already trading two hundred points above the strike price, so basically, in the case of the call option, the person who has bought a call option, he makes the money only when the price of the underlying, which is the Nifty Futures in this case, trades at a price which is higher than the strike price for which the call option has been bought. Now, this two hundred is basically called an intrinsic value of the option, and this hundred rupees is basically on account of various factors. Uh, so, in options, we have called as option Greeks, delta, gamma, theta, vega, and rho. Uh, this is a very advanced level of options. So, in this, I am just covering the fundamental. So, this hundred rupees is on account of those various uh, other factors, which is generally uh, termed as the time value of money. So, this two hundred rupees is the intrinsic value. And this hundred rupees is the time value of the money. I, I have just taken an example that the person, uh, when he has bought the contract, was fifteenth of Jan, and the expiry date was twenty seventh of Jan, and the days of expiry was twelve days. Whereas in the case of the put option, if you see, I have taken the same uh, parameters: eighteen thousand Nifty futures, spot trading at seventeen thousand nine fifty, its strike price seventeen hundred, uh, seventeen thousand eight hundred. So in this case, the option price is hundred rupees only. I, now somebody may wonder uh, the strike price is same in case of both the call and put option, but why the option price is not the same? Because the person who has bought the call option, he will make money only if the underlying price starts trading above the strike price. Whereas the put option buyer will make money only if the underlying price, which is the Nifty futures, starts moving below the strike price. So in this case. Uh, the nifty futures is 200 away from this strike price if this price would have been 17600 then maybe this price of this option may be 300 rupees but it is already trading beyond the strike price so that's why this option price is 100 rupees so i've just taken this prices as as hypothetical example for uh, uh, explaining the concept of call and put option the actual prices may vary in the market depending on various conditions so in this case the intrinsic value is zero because this put buyer will make money Only if this Nifty futures start trading below seventeen thousand eight hundred strike price, which is not the case. So hundred rupees is entire the time value of money. There is no intrinsic value in that. So now say on expiry date of the contract, which is twenty seven Jan, which we have taken. Ah, uh, say the Nifty ah uh, spot expires at eighteen thousand five hundred. So obviously on the expiry of the contract, the futures and spot becomes the same. So you can go and practically see on the exchange website as well. You will see whenever the contract is expiring, whenever is the last date. Now, so Nifty futures and spot becomes the same for the current month. Now, say the Nifty spot expires at eighteen thousand five hundred. So the call option of seventeen thousand eight hundred strike price will expire at seven hundred rupees. So this amount will be received by the call option buyer, and it will be paid by the call seller. How this seven hundred rupees is coming? Because the strike price was seventeen thousand eight hundred. Ah, uh, the Nifty spot expires at eighteen thousand five hundred. So the differential is seven hundred, which will be received by the call option buyer, and it will be paid by the call seller. Whereas the put option of seventeen thousand eight hundred strike will expire at nil. It has expired nil because the Nifty futures has expired at a price which is higher than the strike price in the case of the put option. We will understand the profit and loss uh, scenarios by way of a table in the example in the next slide. Uh, so, so just see. Uh, in this example, the Nifty futures eighteen thousand five hundred. The spot also expires at eighteen thousand five hundred. The strike price was seventeen thousand eight hundred. So he has basically paid option price of three hundred rupees upfront only. The settlement price is seven hundred rupees. Basically, a difference between this spot and its strike price. So his profit becomes four hundred rupees only, even though it has expired. Uh, it has expired at a price which is seven hundred higher than the strike price, but his profit is four hundred rupees only because he has paid three hundred rupees as upfront premium. 
where is the loss for the option seller is 400 rupees now say if this nifty futures would have would have expired at 20000 i'm just taking a hypothetical example so see in that case the option the call option buyer has paid only 300 rupees as the premium where has its settlement price is 2200 and the profit turns out to 1900 so we can see by paying a 300 rupees he has incurred he has gained a profit of 1900 rupees whereas the option seller has received a premium of only 300 rupees whereas his loss become 1900 so that's why we say that the option seller always has the limited reward to the extent of the premium received and his risk is always unlimited so i am just taking hypothetical example if say if this would have been expired 25000 I I understand that twenty five thousand is a very arbitrary number, but just giving you an example of understanding that what does the option seller runs. So that's why we say uh, that uh, the option seller always has a uh, limited reward and the unlimited risk. Similar is the case we can see in the case of the put option. Since the uh, Nifty futures or uh, spot has expired at a price which is higher than the strike price of the put option, so the settlement price is zero. But what in case this Nifty futures would have expired at fifteen thousand? We all have seen how the Nifty and Bank Nifty crashed in the March twenty COVID crash, and it fell down by thirty forty percent in a uh, span of uh, seven ten days only. So in this case, this hundred rupees of option price, which was paid, which was paid by the option buyer. He would have got a profit of a twenty-eight hundred rupees. Sorry, so there is some uh, formula exam, uh, some formula difference is there. Uh, so in this case, this profit would have been twenty-seven hundred rupees because he has bought a strike price uh, put option seventeen thousand eight hundred. The Nifty futures expired at fifteen thousand, so his settlement price becomes twenty-eight hundred rupees. He has paid an option price of hundred rupees, so his profit becomes twenty seven hundred. Whereas the option seller loss becomes twenty seven hundred rupees. So we can see uh, what is uh, the reward and risk for the option buyer and the option seller. So now, in order to uh, move ahead uh, in the uh, options uh, learning uh, the fundamentals of uh, call and put option we just understand uh, certain uh, basic uh, things before we move ahead so there are basically three types of market uh, one is called as bullish uh, where we are expecting the market to move in the upward direction one is called bearish where somebody is having a view that the market will move in the downward direction and another is called as sideways where the person expect that the market will remain at the same price or it will move in a very tight range of uh, one plus minus 1 2% so these are basically three types of markets now uh, as i explained earlier the value of an option can be uh, divided into two parts one is the intrinsic value and another is the time value the intrinsic value is basically the value of an option which would be paid if the option can be exercised immediately so like in case of a call option where we saw that the nifty futures was trading at 18000 and somebody had bought a call option of 17800 at a price of 300 rupees so the intrinsic value in that option was 200 rupees so that 200 rupees is basically called an intrinsic value 100 rupees is basically called the time value now we have understood like there are two types of option one is uh, european type of options where, which can be exercised only on uh, expiry of the contract which is followed in india and another is uh, american style of options which can be exercised on or before the expiry of the contract as well which is not followed in india under that we have understood there are two types of broad option one is call option and put option now in the call and put option also there are uh, three categories of option one is called as itm which is in the money itm in the money another is called atm which is at the money and third one is called otm which is out of money so just understand and just remember these three terms we will understand this by way of an example in the our next few slides so when an option is called uh, in the money when it is having an intrinsic value 
So like in case of the call option example, where the Nifty futures was trading as 18,000 and the call option was 17,800. So 17,800 was basically in the money call option. Somebody has gone and bought an in the money call option, which already had an intrinsic value of 200 rupees. So a call option is called in, uh, in the money when the current price is greater than the strike price, which was there in case of our example. Whereas a put option will be called as in the money when the current price is less than the strike price. So in the previous example, where we have considered the strike price of 17,800 for the put option, where the Nifty futures was trading as 18,000. So this was not the uh, in the money uh, put option. In, in this case, if the Nifty futures would have been trading at 17,600, so in that case, 17,800 strike price put option would have been called the in the money. Then uh, we have uh, ATM that is at the money option and OTM, which is out of money option. Uh, so when the Nifty futures is trading at 18,000 and somebody is uh, buying an 18,000 call option or a put option that is called at the money because he has basically bought an option which is trading uh, at a strike price which is equal to the uh, price of the underlying. So the entire value of that option is the time value only and there is no intrinsic value. Whereas out of money option was that uh, in the case of the put option example, where the Nifty futures was trading at 18,000 and somebody had bought the 17,800 strike price put option. So that was the out of the money. So a call option will be called as out of the money when the current price is less than the strike price. Whereas a put option will be called as out of money when the current price is greater than the strike price. So in the case of the call option, if somebody would have bought an 18,200 call, in a speed of 17,800 call when the futures was trading as 18,000. So in that case, the 18,200 call would have been treated as out of money a call option. So see, uh, this is uh, just to uh, summarize this uh, in the money, out of money and uh, ATM call and put option uh, with the help of the example. Uh, which we have explained in the previous slide as well that the Nifty futures is trading at 18,000, the Nifty spot is trading at 17,950. Uh, just and uh, in in case of the call option, the 17,800 will be called as in the money, 18,000 will be called as at the money, and 18,200 will be called as out of money. Whereas in the case of the put option, the 17,800, which was an in the money, a call option uh, for the uh, call option type, the same is called as out of money for the put option. Why, why out of money? Because the current price is already trading at the price which is higher than the strike price. Whereas 18,000 option, both in the case of call and put option is called as at the money and 18,200 is called as out of money for call option, whereas the same is called as in the money for the put option. Because if somebody goes and wants to exercise this contract today, so he is already in the money by 200 rupees in the case of the put option. So when a person is buying and selling an option, so like how, uh, what is the financial impact? Uh, so when a person is buying an option, so his maximum outflow at that point of time is the amount of the premium which he has to pay it. and there is no additional margin required. So now in case of the call option of 17,800 strike price, which we have seen in the previous slide example. So the price was trading at 300 rupees and one lot of Nifty is equal to a 50 quantities. So any uh, futures contract of Nifty or any call and put option of Nifty, the quantity is equivalent to 50. And in the case of bank Nifty, it is 25. And in the case of the various stock options, it is a uh, various quantities in the FNO segment. Like in the case of ITC, it is 3,200. In the case of Tata Power, it is 6,750. So it varies from contract to contract. So the person would have paid only 300 rupees multiplied by 50, which is 15,000 rupees. So that is the maximum outflow that the option buyer has to pay. And he has uh, no requirement of keeping a margin. Whereas the person who would have sold that call option, he would have received that entire premium of 15,000 rupees, but he would also be required to keep additional margin with his broker as required by the uh, exchange. 
in order to cover the potential losses on the trade. Like we have seen that the uh, losses of the option seller can uh, can run into an unlimited amount. So that's why he has to keep a certain margin which keeps on uh, revising from time to time by the broker as mandated by the action depending on the various market scenarios. Uh, so this is screenshot I have just taken from the Jiroda website uh, to, to just to give an example. So see, a person is basically selling an 18,000 call option. So you will see here CE is written. So in the market, whenever uh, call option is known by CE and put option is known by PE. So a person has sold an 18,000 call option strike price of 22nd Feb expiry contract. The quantity is 50. So you will see he is basically receiving a premium of 30,070 rupees. So maybe the screenshot when I took at that point of time, the price may be trading at around 600 rupees. So 600 multiplied by 50 become 30,000 rupees close to. Whereas he has to keep a margin of close to 1,23,000 rupees. So, so this margin is broken up into two parts. One is called span margin. Another is called exposure margin. So what is the difference between this? So span margin, a person has to compulsory keep in the form of the liquid cash with his broker. So basically he has to fund his account, which would be, uh, which should be at least equivalent to this span margin. This exposure margin, the person can keep either in the form of cash or if the person is having certain equity shares in his demand account with the broker, he can go and pledge those shares with the broker to the uh, depository participant, either CDSL or NSGL. And he would be getting certain margin against uh, those uh, equity shares after certain cut as mandated by the exchange. And this exposure margin can be made with that margin as well, which you would be getting on the shares or it can be made by way of uh, the cash as well. So we can see that the amount of premium which has been received, whereas the margin is four times the amount of the premium received. So this margin can uh, keep on varying uh, depending on the market scenario. So whenever there is huge volatility in the market or there is huge uncertainty in the market, this margin keeps on revising on the upwards as well. So it is not uh, that the person has to keep on this margin as well. Maybe this margin can be revised to say one lakh fifty thousand rupees on the next day. So that that person has to go and uh, make up for the shortfall of this amount. Otherwise, the penalty would be levied by the broker as mandated by the exchange. Whereas the person who has bought this same call option, you can see there is no margin requirement. This is screenshot again. I have taken from the Jiroda website for the purpose of explaining only. So you can see the outflow which would have been paid by the buyer of this call option of 18,000 CE 50 quantity for 22nd Feb contract, the margin is zero. So he has basically has to fund his account of uh, 30,070 rupees premium only, which has been paid by him and the uh, brokerage and the other charges. So now uh, in order to move further, now what are the uses of the options? Why the option is used in the market? Uh, till now, we have understood uh, European style of option, American style of options, then the call option and the put option with the help of an example of the insurance contract and the property buyer and seller. Then we've understood uh, in the money, at the money and out of money call and put option. Then what are the risk and rewards for the option buyer and the option seller? But why this option as a derivative contract is being used in the market? Why? So there are basically uh, three uses of the options. One is for the purpose of hedging, where a person basically hedges his position in the market or his portfolio in the market. Another is for the purpose of uh, speculative. A person also does a lot of speculations in the market, whereby he doesn't have any portfolio or he doesn't have any position in the market. In spite of that, he goes and uh, buys or sells a call or put option that is called as speculative. Then there is another uh, feature whereby a person does a partial hedging. So it is not treated as a full hedging. It is a partial hedging. And at the same time, the person also generates certain income as well. So we will explain uh, this uh, three types of uses of the options by way of uh, various examples in the uh, next few slides. Uh, so you see, uh, I have taken deliberately the same figures of Nifty Futures and, and, and uh, Sports so that person can correlate the same example again and again in the previous slides as well. So again, I have taken the same figures. The Nifty Futures is uh, 
trading at seventeen thousand nine fifty. Eighteen thousand is strike price. Call option is trading at three hundred rupees, and option and uh, put option is also trading at three hundred rupees. So basically, this is the price of the at the money call option and at the money put option. So this, uh, so why it is at the money? Because this strike price is equivalent to the price of the underlying. Now say uh, somebody is having an investment portfolio of eighteen lakh rupees. Now uh, that person. current view is that that the market is a bearish so like as we understood that there are three types of market bullish bearish or sideways so now this person's views is basically that the market is bearish and the market may fall in the a short term scenario and he wants to hedge his portfolio now how he can hedge his portfolio he can go and buy a put option either in the money or at the money or out of money depending on uh, his uh, risk appetite and the cost of the hedging which he is willing to bear so in this case we have uh, taken an example that he goes and buy a put option of 18000 so in this case this is the this is called the hedging technique and the person is not generating uh, any income so basically he has hedged his portfolio partially only to the extent of 50% only why uh, why 15% because he has basically bought a put option of 18000 so one lot of put option is equivalent to 50 quantity so 50 multiplied by 18000 turns out to 9 lakh rupees so he has basically portfolio of 18 lakh rupees where has he has bought a put option one lot of 18000 so 9 lakh rupees hedging he has done so which is basically 50% hedging and when this person is buying a put option so obviously somebody has to be there in the market who wants to sell a put option as well so the person who is basically selling a put option he is basically a speculator so even though this uh, speculation is also a, and uh, uses of option but we need the speculators as well in the market otherwise there won't be any liquid market because if this person wants to buy a put option obviously somebody must be there in the market to sell this put option otherwise there will not be an efficient and the liquid market so in this case so this is the example of the speculation where he is not having any portfolio his portfolio is big but in spite of that he is selling a put option he is having a view that the market will either be sideways it will not move at all or it will be bullish it will go and move in the upward direction so in case the this uh, uh, nifty at the end of the contract Uh, and set the price which is higher than the strike price of eighteen thousand. So this entire fifteen thousand rupees of premium, which has been received by this speculator, will become as income, and this entire fifteen thousand will become as the hedging cost for this person A who has basically hedged his portfolio. Now the third type of uh, uh, use of the option which we have explained, uh, which is basically partial hedging and generating an income as well. So there are certain person who basically they do what. they are having a bearish view but they are not having that strong bearish view they feel that the market may fall by 200 300 points only and they want to generate certain income uh, against their portfolio without touching their portfolio so what they do they basically go and sell a call option in the money out of the money or out of the money again it depends on person to person and their uh, like uh, risk appetite so he goes and sells this 18000 at the money call option at 300 rupees so this person is basically receiving 15000 rupees of premium upfront he has basically sold one lot of a uh, call option so he has basically done a partial hedging and he is also generating an income now what can be the scenario at the end of this expiry contract in case the nifty futures uh expires at a price which is equivalent to 18000 or less than the 18000 then this entire 15000 rupees will be pocketed by this person who is having a portfolio of 18 lakh rupees whereas in case the nifty futures uh trades at a price which is higher than the strike price say the nifty futures ends at a price of 18500 at the expiry of the contract now in that case this person has sold a uh, at the money call option of 18000 he has received a premium of 300 rupees this option contract is expiring at 18500 so his settlement price becomes 500 rupees 18500 minus 18000 so in that case his loss would be 200 rupees so he has initially received 300 rupees now he has to pay 500 rupees so in that case the his, his loss becomes 200 rupees but obviously there will be certain notional gain as well because if the market has moved in the upward direction which is against the bearish or the sideways views of this person so even though this person has lost 200 points on this one lot of the uh, call option contract which has been sold by him 
but this person also gains certain national profit as well on, on this portfolio so that's why uh, selling a call option against the portfolio is treated as partial hedging thus generating an income on the market but it is not a complete hedging technique but there are certain people in the market who does it now now in when this person is selling a call option to somebody buying uh, so somebody must be buying a call option as well uh, so he is basically an speculator he doesn't have any portfolio he is having a view that the market will move in the upward direction so he is buying a call option of 300 strike price and then if he will go and it will end at 19000 or 20000 and then he will get an hefty profit so these are basically the key uses of the option hedging or uh, speculation and partial hedging plus generating income so uh, in the previous example i have just uh, plotted the amount uh, so where the person a has basically hedged his portfolio of 15 lakh rupees uh, if you recall i have said the hedging was only to the action of 50% only uh, 50% only or that 50% was derived because he has basically bought one put option of 18000 strike price one lot was equivalent to 50 quantity so 18000 multiplied by 50 becomes 9 lakh rupees so this person's hedging would have been 100% only in case this person would have bought two lot of the option contract and not the one lot but we can understand that hedging is a very costly tool. if somebody would have bought a, a five month uh, contract only of 18000 strike price put option his cost of hedging would have been 15000 rupees which turns out to 0.83% per annum so uh, we can see that the uh, even though by hedging uh, his portfolio this person he is uh, restricting the downside to his portfolio to the action of 50% but this is very a costly tool so that's why uh, people don't use it very frequently and it depends on person to person and uh, we can uh, we can hedge our portfolio uh, whenever our view is uh, bearish in the market so uh, domestic institutional investors which is uh, which are called as diis or foreign institutional investors which are called as fiis if somebody goes and tries to see that what portfolio these people are holding these people always hedges their portfolio to a certain extent because obviously there is always a, a level of uncertainty in the market there can be uh, certain types of uh, black swan events which nobody can foresee like the covid crash which we see the 911 crash which we have seen and the whenever the uh, us federal reserve goes and tapers the market it uh, tries to pull up the easy liquidity from the market then also the market falls so there are various types of uncertainties in the market by which the people goes and hedges the portfolio as well but obviously that is very a costly tool and it depends on person to person some person prefer not to hedge their portfolio at all some person prefers to hedge their portfolio to a certain extent at all the times and some person also prefers to hedge their portfolio only when their view is bearish so it depends on person to person so again uh, so in in this example we have seen basically a person who is buying a put option which is called a real hedging and the person who is selling a put option that is called a speculation uh, whose gain is limited to the extent of 15000 rupees only uh, whereas another example we have seen where the person goes for the partial hedging uh, scenario and also generating an income whereby the person is selling a call option he is generating an income of 15000 rupees upfront so in case the nifty futures expires at a price which is equivalent to 18000 strike price or below that then this entire 15000 rupees is pocketed by him and he basically generates a 0.83% return on his investment portfolio even though his investment portfolio doesn't move at all in spite of that he is earning a 50000 rupees income on his portfolio so i have seen many people in the market who keeps on doing in the market uh, uh, these types of hedging techniques so like i have seen in uh, in this example 18000 at the money call option somebody would have wanted and they could have sold an out of money call option they would have sold 18500 strike price call or they would have sold 19000 strike price at least 5 to 6% away uh, from the current nifty futures price so obviously the premium would be much lesser in case of those out of money call option uh, the probability of going that option in the money and the person incurring a loss is also very less. So uh, till now, like uh, we have explained the call and put option on the uh, index only. Uh, so I will also now explain uh, the 
call option, the put option by way of various techniques on the particular stocks as well. So, uh, put option is also called in the market as. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so put option. Uh, in the case of the stock is also called in the market as a protective put option as well. Okay. Now let's say an example that we own a particular stock. Say uh, we take an example of ITC. Now one lot of ITC is equivalent to 3,200 shares. So somebody can go and buy in the cash market one share as well. But I'm uh, speaking from the perspective of futures and options. So one lot of future or option of ITC is equivalent to 3,200 shares. So I'm taking an example that a person is having 3,200 shares of the ITC. Uh, so he has basically bought this quantity of ITC from the long-term perspective. Now his view is a uh, bearish in the short term. He feels that in the next one or two uh, months, there are a lot of uncertainty in the market and the broader market may fall. And the stock price of ITC also may fall in the short term and he may incur a uh, national loss on his investment portfolio. So he doesn't want to part away from his investment portfolio of ITC, which he has basically bought for the long term. Now, uh, what this person can do, he can basically buy at the money put option or at the money uh, put option or in the money put option on the stock that is ITC on which he is already owning. So this will basically act like an insurance and it will protect that person against any fall in the price of the uh, ITC below the price, below the strike price of the option which has been bought by him. And uh, his loss would, would be limited to the extent of the uh, premium which has been paid by him upfront, which is called as an insurance premium. So, uh, so we take, uh, so we will understand this, uh, this protective put option by way of an example in the next slide. Now say uh, in this example, uh, say the price of the ITC at which that person has bought uh, 3,200 shares is trading at uh, 200 rupees. I have just taken a hypothetical example of 200 rupees. Currently it is trading somewhere around 215 to 220. So that person has bought the ITC stock 3,200 at 200 rupees. Now out of money put option, strike price 198 is trading at a premium of 2 rupees. At the money, a put option is strike price of 200 rupees is trading at 3 rupees. And in the money, a put option is strike price of 202 is trading at 4 rupees. This I have taken just an hypothetical example. Now, uh, the person is already having 3200 shares of ITC. So he is basically long on the stock. He is basically bought. Now, this person is, is, is uh, has basically hedged his portfolio of ITC of 3,200 shares by buying a put option of 198 strike price at a price of 2 rupees. Now we just see uh, what would be the scenario uh, in case the price of the ITC ends at a just a second, my uh, laptop got just hacked. So now say the price of the ITC ends at 180 rupees at the expiry of the current contract for which this uh, put option has been bought by him. Now, since the uh, his buy price was 200 rupees, so he is sitting on a national loss of 20 rupees. That is 200 minus 180. But now since this person has bought a put option of 198 strike price on the ITC and the current price is trading at 180. So this uh, put option has basically become in the money because uh, the uh, current price of the ITC is trading at a price which is less than the strike price for which this put option has been bought. So his profit on this uh, put option is 16 rupees. Why 16 rupees? Because 198 minus 180, 18 rupees is the price uh, which would be received by him, but he has paid an upfront premium of 2 rupees. So Uh, his profit becomes 16 rupees. So in his case, uh, even though his national loss on the portfolio is 20 rupees, but that is getting compensated by the profit on the long 198 put option is strike price. So his maximum loss is capped to 4 rupees. So we can see uh, in 
So at whatever price the uh, price of the ITC ends at the expiry of the contract, his maximum loss is always capped uh, to four rupees. Uh, you can uh, yourself see and plot these prices uh, in your Excel sheet as well, uh, which will give you a better understanding. So see, even if the price is ending at 195 rupees, he is having a loss of national loss of 5 rupees on his investment portfolio, whereas the gain on his 198 strike price will be 1 rupees. That is 198 minus 195, 3 rupees minus 2 rupees, which is the cost of the put option, which has been paid by upfront. So in this case also, the uh, uh, maximum loss is restricted to 4 rupees only. Whereas whenever the price of the ITC ends at a price which is higher than the investment price, that is 200 rupees or above that, then this entire 2 rupees which has been paid by this person as the premium upfront, that is the loss for him. And that gets compensated to a certain extent by uh, the national profit on his investment portfolio. So obviously, uh, if somebody goes and buys a put option is strike price of 198 at the price of rupees 2, so the total premium outgo is 6,400 rupees. So that is also a bit significant. Uh, so if a person is having 3,200 shares of ITC of 200 rupees, so that turns out to around 6,40,000 rupees. So that person is basically paying 6,400 rupees of premium for one month. That turns out to 1% on his investment portfolio. So like as I explained earlier as well, so that uh, hedging is a very costly tool and uh, the usage of the same depends on person to person. So we will also uh, see this example by way of a payoff graph as well in the next slide. So you, you just see this a uh, blue line. So this blue line basically denotes the person who is basically holding an ITC stock and it doesn't hedge his portfolio at all. He doesn't want to pay any premium, whether the market view as per him is uh, bearish, bullish or sideways, he basically doesn't do anything. So uh, his gain or loss on the portfolio of the ITC is like a straight line. So in case the price of the ITC ends at uh, 210 rupees at the expiry, it is the uh, national gain is 10 rupees. In case, whereas the price of the ITC ends at 180 rupees, that is 20 rupees down. So this 20 rupees is the loss for you. Whereas you see this gray line, this is basically for that person who has basically uh, hedged his ITC portfolio because his current view was bearish. So you can see his national loss. His total loss on the ITC doesn't exceed 4 rupees in all these scenarios. You can plot in the Excel uh, where you uh, assume that the price of the ITC ends at uh, 100 rupees as well at the expiry. You will see that your loss will always be capped to the extent of 4 rupees only because your national loss on the investment will be compensated by the gain on the put option which has been bought. Obviously, your gain on the uh, ITC stock where you have hedged will always be a bit lesser as compared to the person who doesn't wish to hedge his portfolio. But obviously, uh, the person who has hedged his portfolio and the market uh, definitely goes in the uh, bearish manner only and, uh, as per his view. So his loss is unlimited. So this is just a payoff chart when the person is doing a protective uh, put option on the uh, on any position that the person is having in a particular stock. So uh, before we move ahead on the next slide, I, mean, I just want to uh, give you a disclaimer. This is not any trade recommendation. This is just for the purpose of explanation uh, to give you a practical perspective how these things are handled in the market. And second thing is that in the case of the index option, that is Nifty or Futures. So at the expiry of the contract, if somebody goes and doesn't and, and uh, doesn't uh, squares of that contract, so the settlement happens at the differential price. So if somebody has bought a 17,800 call option and the Nifty ends at 18,500 on the expiry, so his settlement price will be 700. So even if that person doesn't squares of that contract on the expiry, the 700 multiplied by 50, did, uh, uh, deducted by certain brokerage charges would be credited in, in his account. Whereas in the case of the stock option, the person has to compulsory square of the contract at least four or five working days before the expiry of the contract. In case the person doesn't do that, so there is a requirement of compulsory physical delivery of the shares required to be given or taken. Maybe we will uh, cover this in maybe in another session. So just to give you a disclaimer that in case of the put option or in the case of the call option on a particular stock, I'm not talking about the index. The contract has to be compulsory ex uh, squared off at least four or five working days before the expiry of the contract. Otherwise, there is a requirement of compulsory physical delivery obligations. 
which which may have a certain uh, cost implications as well on the guy so uh, in this case if this person uh, would not have a uh, squared of the contract of this 198 uh, put strike price and this contract would have expired and the person forgot to squares of the contract then what would happen in the case the price of the itc ends at 180 the entire 3200 shares of the itc would be debited on the demat account of that person and that would get sold off in the market at 198 rupees why 198 rupees because 198 is the strike price at which the person has bought the put option and that put option has basically become in the money on the expiry because the price of the underlying which is the itc in the current case has expired at a price 180 rupees so that's why if the person somebody has hedged his portfolio of itc or any other stock and his view was only to hedge his portfolio to certain extent then it is always prudent to square of that contract on or before the expiry of the contract otherwise there would be a requirement of giving a compulsory delivery of the shares in case of the protective put options so uh one we have explained the protective put option now this is another example which we have uh, explained the uses of the option uh, which is basically partial hedging and income generation so it is called in the market as covered call so this is called in the market as covered call so one was protective put where the person has basically hedged the downside of his uh, investment in a particular stock which was equivalent to the quantity of the one uh, contract of fno lot now in this case again we take the example of the itc only say the person is holding 3200 shares of itc which has been bought at an investment price of rupees 200 rupees per share now the person is having a view that the market is is mild bullish or it is sideways uh, either it will not move at all or it will move only or uh, to a certain extent only and the price and the price of the itc may increase marginally or it will remain flat now that person wants to generate an income on the on his portfolio of the itc stock so this will help him to generate the extra income which we have seen uh, in the previous examples as well but this will also limit the upside potentials on the itc stock which the person is having we will explain this again by way of a practical example as well as by way of a way of graph as well now we take the same example only which we have taken in the previous uh, example uh, so the uh, price of the itc is 200 rupees which is the investment price 198 call price is trading at 4 rupees this is basically in the money call option at the money call option 200 strike price is trading at 3 rupees and uh, out of money uh, call option at 202 strike price is ending at 2 rupees now this person is having a view that the itc price uh, will not go beyond 202 for this month it, it is trading in a sideways manner so this person goes and shorts a 202 call so whenever somebody is buying a call or put option that is called as a long call or long put option and when uh, whenever somebody is selling a put option or selling a call that is treated as short short positions so now say the uh, price of the itc ends at 180 rupees so his notional loss on the portfolio is 20 rupees 200 minus 180 and this entire premium of 2 rupees becomes his income because the price of the itc has ended at a price which is lesser than the strike price uh, but we can see when the price of the ITC is ending at 210 rupees. So even though his uh, national gain on the portfolio is 10 rupees, but he has sold a basically uh, 202 call price uh, strike at 200 at uh, 2 rupees and this price ends at uh, 210. So the settlement price becomes 210 minus 202, which is 8 rupees. So he is required to pay 8 rupees at the expiry of the contract. And since he has already paid uh, 2 rupees, so his loss becomes 6 rupees. Now, in the case of the protective put option, we have seen that the maximum loss in case of the downside is always capped to 4 rupees. And in this case, uh, the maximum upside for this person who has basically shorted a call becomes 4 rupees only. So even if the price is, uh, of the ITC is ending at uh, 300 rupees, so in that case also his maximum profit would be 4 rupees only. Because in case the price ends at 300, so this 202 call price will become 98 rupees. So his loss on this uh, short call of 202 will become 96. 
and his portfolio gain would become 100 rupees so his maximum gain would uh, be uh, restricted to 4 rupees only now again this is uh, not a recommended thing but many people do this in the market they, they generally don't go and short a very uh, near uh, price this call so they go and generally short at 20% or 30% away from the current price so basically the premium uh, for that uh, call option would be much lesser but uh, the probability of uh, the price of the itc uh, touching that price which is 20 20% or 30% away from the current price is also very less in a single month this also we will explain by a way of a, a graph as well you can see uh, the blue line which is basically a person who is holding the stock of the itc and uh, he doesn't uh, hedges his portfolio uh, uh, by way of the uh, partial hedging, that is the covered call. So his gain is uh, like a straight line, uh, 20 rupees on the downside, negative in case the price ends at 180 rupees or 10 rupees, uh, which is on the upside. And whereas the person who basically hedges this portfolio of ITC in order to generate extra income, which is also treated as a partial hedging, so you can see his uh, uh, loss is though unlimited, but his gain is always limited to the extent of 4 rupees only. So again, in this case also, like, this is not a trade recommendation. This is just a hypothetical example to give understanding about the covered call. And uh, so this is not recommended at all. Uh, then the uh, third uh, type of option which I am explaining. So this is also called an speculative as well. And somebody calls in the market it as a cash. Now, why it is called as a cash secure put? Uh, we just want to, uh, I mean, I just give an example. We again take the example of the ITC only. Now, say uh, somebody wants to buy uh, ITC stock of 3,200 shares, but his view is that the current price of the ITC is overpriced and he wants to buy the ITC stock 3,200 shares at a price which is less than the current price. Now, say the current price is trading at 217 rupees and he wants to buy the ITC stock at 200 rupees. Now, what this person can do, uh, if, if he wants to generate an income, plus he also wants to have the ITC shares as well at 200 rupees. So he can go and simply uh, sell a put option of a strike price of 200 rupees of the ITC. Uh, this will help this person to generate an extra income because whenever he is selling the put option of 200 strike price, whatever premium uh, is received by him uh, becomes his income. And in case the price of the ITC ends at a price which is equivalent to 200 rupees or below that, that person can go and uh, buy 3,200 shares of ITC. Like uh, as I explained in the case of the stock options, if we are holding the option contract with the expiry, there is a compulsory uh, delivery requirement as well. But there is also a downside to it. This person has basically sold an uh, put option of 200 strike price. Uh, so he wants to buy ITC stock at this price only. But in case the price of the ITC starts falling below 200, so he is under an obligation to take the delivery of the ITC uh, shares at 200 rupees. But in case the price of the ITC ends at say 180 rupees, so even though he is getting a delivery at 200 rupees because he has basically sold a put option, he is under an obligation to take the delivery. But he is already sitting on a national loss of 20 rupees on his investment portfolio. So we will explain this by way of an example and the uh, payoff graph in the next slide as well. Uh, so this is just for an example. See, uh, again, I have taken this as a, a screenshot from the Jiroda website as well. A person has basically sold a 24th Feb 2022 uh, expiry contract of ITC of a strike price of 200. So 200 P, P denotes put option. One lot is equivalent to 3,200 shares. The premium which has been received by this person is 6,720 which is basically 2.1 rupees. 2.1 multiplied by 3,200 turns out to 6,720. And you can see the total margin which is required to be cured by this person is 1 lakh uh, 3,000 rupees close to. This is span margin, exposure margin, which I explained expand margin can be kept in the form of cash. Exposure margin can be kept either in the form of cash or by way of the margin on the existing uh, equity portfolio which is having, which can be placed. Now you can see, uh, uh, say for an example, the person keeps on selling this uh, 200 strike price put option month on month. So obviously this uh, premium will uh, keep on fluctuating. It will not uh, remain this uh, level only because the uh, premium 
is decided this is the difference between the current price of the underlying and the strike price as well as the time uh, uh, time to expiry from the current date of the contract but say assume if the premium is 2.1 rupees only every month the person keeps on selling this uh, the contract of the itc so uh, you can see the person is generating a monthly income of 6720 rupees on this margin but this thing should never be done with this margin only because in case the price of the itc becomes 200 or below that the person has an obligation to take the delivery of 3200 shares at 200 rupees which is equivalent to 640000 rupees so if somebody wants to do this what they can do they can keep 140000 rupees with their broker why 140000 rupees because this margin can also be increased depending on the market scenario so it will have some cushion in case the margin goes up so he can keep 140000 rupees with his broker he can earn a premium of 6720 every month or this premium will be different depending on the price and time and all and balance 5 lakh rupees he can keep in his bank account and earn the interest on the savings or he can invest that money in the short term fds and all for a tenor of say 15 days or he can invest that in a various uh, liquid or overnight mutual funds and generate an income as well of 3 to 4 percent annually so you can see uh, by doing this strategy as well of cash secured put there are many people in the market who does this and they generate uh, an income somewhere between 10 to 15 percent on his amount which is like in our case, it is takes like 40,000 rupees. So you can see a person is generating close to 1% every month by selling this cash secure put. And plus is also generating 3 to 4% annually on this entire amount, which turns out to close to a 12 to 15%. So why I am saying 10 to 15% and not 12 to 15% is that because this premium will keep on varying. Now, again, this is not a trade recommendation. I have just given this as an example. Uh, this of cash secured put, which is also used in the market. Uh, so you can connect me, uh, connect with me on my YouTube channel. I have my uh, YouTube channel as well, where I have recently started of uh, taking an initiative of educating the people on the various experts of the market. You can also connect with me on the LinkedIn as well. That's it from my side. Uh, the house is open for all the people. If you have anything to ask, any queries, you are free to ask. Thank you, Thank sir, you, sir, for your nice deliberation and insightful presentation covering the basics of option, use of option, hedging, etc. You also explain how put and call options are working in stock market, which will very much helpful to our participants in their trading and investing. I would also like to thank CMA Satyasundra Mahasur, member of our chapter, for his cooperation in arranging this event. Hope with the professional, with the uh, with our expertise knowledge, can excel in this area also. Now the house uh, platform is open for uh, question and answer session. Uh, Agrawalaji, one question in chat box. What is riskier, a call or a put option? Is covered call strategy is the safest option? See, uh, this is something from my side. This is Satya. This is from my side. These two questions are from my side. I, I said, fully yeah. understand uh, two things that uh, depending on the market situation, whether it is bullish, bearish, or sideways. So it depends whether we'll go for a call or put option. Is there? Any other perspective to look at it like, no? So what exactly we should do in terms of call and put option, apart from the market situation? Is there any other perspective to look at it? No, no, see, uh, so like, uh, as I explained, so there are basically three uses of the options in the market only. One is your hedging, one is your partial hedging plus generating income, and another is speculation. Yes. I have seen people in the market doing all these three things, whether they are having the investment portfolio or not. So it entirely depends on the views of the particular person. So he can go and place his bets by way of this option structures. Uh, if his view is having a bearish, he can go and buy a put option. If his view is having a sideways, he can go and sell a call option against his investment portfolio, which is called a covered call. Yeah. And uh, if his view is bullish, he can simply sit on his portfolio, do nothing, or he can also go and sell a put option as well, whereby he can generate income in two ways. 
because his view is having a bullish he would he would be having a notional gain on his investment portfolio as well but plus he will also eat up the entire premium which he has received by selling a put option so it entirely depends on the person so there is uh, so the person who is selling a call or put option both is riskier for, uh, for that person because his reward is always limited to based on the premium received but his risk is unlimited so it entirely depends on that person so there are various ways of uh, managing the positions as well in case the person who has sold just a blank call or a blank put there are various ways of managing the risk as well of managing his portfolio as well of managing his options position as well the person who is a speculator so there are various types of uh, strategies in the market like uh, that is a bit uh, an advanced or pro type of section which which i have not covered in this because this is just a fundamentals Uh, I understand, so, uh, but one one request will be to you since you are expert on the subject matter. Whenever the things will normalize, no, we should come down on an official day on uh, live environment. No, we should do some kind of uh, this yeah, call yeah, and option yeah, already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Definitely, we we'll do it some day. So, uh, so like uh, one one more question you have written is that the covered call strategy is the safest option as well. No, so whenever you are selling an option, so in the covered call also. you are basically selling a call against your against your portfolio you are basically selling a call on the index against your portfolio or you are selling a call on a particular stock option against your position in the stock so that is not the safest option but if your view is that the market is bearish or is sideways or it is mild bullish then that strategy works so each type of this strategy your speculation okay. your hedging partial hedging each type of strategy works but it depends on the views of the market sideways bullish or bearish so you can place your uh, strategy depending on your view right right thank you thank you uh, somebody has written sir how can one earn premium if its strike price is similar to market price so obviously that person can eat up that entire premium so like uh, uh, just to give you the answer to your question by way of an example so if the nifty futures is trading at 18000 rupees and if somebody has sold a call option of 18000 so how he can eat up the entire premium of this 18000 strike price in case the market ends at 18000 or below 18000 only the moment the uh, nifty futures start trading at a price which is equivalent to the strike price plus the amount of the premium which has been received by that person that person will start incurring loss uh then one more question was there please explain option in intraday trading boss so this is a bit uh, like uh, advanced type of thing which i have just told that there are there are various types of strategies in the market like just to uh, give you a brief perspective so you must have uh, uh, uh heard of this term like bull call spread a uh, bear call spread bull or bear put spread iron fly iron condor strategy seagull structure uh call ladder put ladder call ratio put ratio calendar uh, uh, spread and all so there are various types of strategies which which people do but those are basically for those people who are uh, who are into this uh, into full time or there are many people who are also doing it on positional basis as well on part time as well i don't see any other question in the chat box if any other question is there for any member you are feel uh, uh, feel free to ask feel the range kada dekhlo type sort of question dawa dekhlo yes type box ka kada question dawa hello ne put kare okay Sir, you have any question? Uh, somebody has asked a question. What is the minimum quantity of share need to be bought for option trading? So, see, like as I explained, one was the index option and another was the stock option. Yeah. So, for the index option, there is no requirement of having any quantity of shares in the in your account. If you want to do speculation, you want to simply sell or buy a call or put option, you can do. Uh, uh so in case you are a buyer you have to have the minimum amount of the premium plus the brokerage in case you you are a seller then you need to have the specified margin which like i have which like i have explained with the example of a screenshot from the jiroda website so that keeps on changing from time to time 
only in case uh, you want to do this uh, structures on a particular equity like i have taken example of the itc you can take example of any stock in that case only you need to have certain shares in case you want to do the covered call or the protective put there are certain people in the market who don't have any investment in any particular stock itc but they keep on uh, selling the put option or they keep on selling the call options as well just as the speculative as well because they have certain because they have taken certain views on that particular stock i hope that answers your question mr bingo okay yes sir one question from my side actually uh, one investor think that market will bearish and he is in put option if market reverse what will be the strategy so you are saying you are basically an investor you are having a bearish view yeah and you have basically bought a put option yeah for hedging your portfolio now after buying a put option if your view changes that yeah. the market is not bearish now it will be either sideways or it will be bullish so you can simply go and square off that put option which you have bought so maybe at the time when you have bought the put option say the option price was trading at 300 rupees Hmm. and the one quantity of the uh, the lot was 50 so your premium outflow was 15000 rupees now after 10 days of you buying that option contract your view changes so you simply go and square of that contract obviously you will have certain hedging cost because the 15000 rupees of premium which you have paid initially so either that 15000 rupees would have increased to a certain extent depending on the price of the nifty at that point of time or it may have decreased as well so the best thing is that is to square off that put option because your main objective of buying a put square option with is stop loss no 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 so if you have basically uh, bought a put option for hedging your portfolio for that particular time period because your view was bearish there should be no stop loss on it if you are going specifically from the hedging perspective okay. there should be no stop loss because say you have bought at 300 rupees you have today put a stop loss in your system at 200 rupees hmm. in the first half the market starts moving in the upward direction so what will happen to your put option the price will start going in the downward direction hmm. it will hit your stop loss you are out of the position now suddenly in the second half the market reverses it falls by 1000 points then what will happen you have incurred a loss on the put option as well plus you have also incurred an optional loss on the investment portfolio as well okay thank you uh, somebody has asked a question how lot is calculated for a particular script so it is decided by the exchange so you can go and see on the nse website or money control app or any other stock market app you will see a lot so like for itc it is 3200 for uh, infosys it is somewhere around 600 for tcs it is 150 so it keeps on are revising it uh, so it depends entirely on the exchanges what is your opinion about the present days of investment in the portfolio management so like see uh, uh, if you are asking this from your personal investment portfolio perspective so again i will see that you can hedge the same depending on its view so as i explained that hedging is a very costly tool we have seen an example there a person has bought a put option of 18000 strike price Uh, where the premium outflow was fifteen thousand rupees, his investment portfolio was eighteen lakh rupees. So the hedging cost was point eight three percent per annum uh, per month, and that was only fifty percent hedging. So you can see by if, if a person does it on a continuous basis, even fifty percent, so his hedging cost turns out to ten percent per annum, which is bit on the higher side. If, if even if we assume an annual CAGR of twelve to fifteen percent, so you can see. that after removing the hedging cost the gain which is left with that person is very uh, minimal 2 to 5% percent. okay there is no other question so now i would like to request cma sn tripathi secretary of the chapter uh, please uh, give the formal vote of thanks thank you sakti sir for giving me the opportunity
to give the formal vote of thanks good evening all today present today all cms for this uh, today's event on fundamental of derivatives call and put option today's resource person ca sandeep agrawal ji our beloved chairman cma himoj mishra sir and chairman pd committee and past chairman of the chapter cma shaktidhar singh sir esteem cma members ccm sir rcm sir past chairman and invitee and guest very good evening to all i cma surjinaran tripathi secretary of the chapter feel honor to propose the vote of thanks i on behalf of the managing committee and the entire cm fraternity here together extend a very happy felt thanks and gratitude to the resource person cma sandeep agrawal ji for acceptance of our invitation and sharing with us about the practical aspect on derivative call and put option hope updated our knowledge bank with respect to capital market thank you sir for enlightening us by sharing your valuable inputs i would also like to thanks our beloved chairman sir cma himoj mishra sir for their moral support and encourage to conduct the webinar from the core of my heart i convey thanks to the chairman pd committee and past chairman of the chapter cma shaktidhar singh sir for taking pen to conduct this webinar successful i convey my cheerful thanks to all lord of all person who has uh, um, attend this seminars for their support and cooperation and nicely interactions last but not the least i am very much happy to express vote of thanks from my bottom of heart to all the professional colleagues in the managing committee staff members of the chapter for their effort and support thank you all for your cordial cooperation and with same sort of support in future program. our next webinar i can also announce that our next webinar analysis on union budget 2022 23 likely to be held on 6 february 2022 at 6:30 pm in the same zoom link with this i hereby declare the closure uh -huh. of the web meet pray to lord jagannath uh -huh. to keep online. you and your beloved one a good healthy and safety environment thank you jai jagannath namaskar sir thank you sandeep ji thank you so much satyendra uh, ji so i have given my uh, youtube channel link on the message yes yes in chat box yes people yes, can sir. go and subscribe to my channel so you will see this content which i have shared on this uh, web, uh, web uh, webinar today so you will see the entire content on my youtube channel as well because in the future also i, I would be uh, preparing various contents and uploading in the youtube channel the only advantage with the people have in the webinar is that you can interact directly with me and you can ask your questions in the youtube yes. channel maybe you will see only the content as well So I have recently started the initiative of educating the people on the options. So I would be preparing various videos on these options, and in the future I would be covering the other uh, topics as well, or uh, technical analysis, uh, commodities, currencies as well. Thank you. Thank you. We will expect we will expect your presence also in physical mode. Uh, in yeah, sure, sure, definitely. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.